Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Tacoma Cyclist. Uh, I am the Tacoma Cyclist, and with me as usual is the Boogeyman. Uh, today we're actually going to finally do a review on the Elite Suido. Uh, this is a, an in-home bike trainer. Hopefully if you're watching this video you already know that, but you know, maybe you don't. Uh, we did an unboxing of this video about six weeks ago, and we've had a few comments both from our website and from uh, YouTube saying, give us a review already. And I imagine it's because, let's face it, we're heading into the winter training season, uh, and many of you aren't going to be riding outdoors, and you want to know, is this actually a good bike trainer for the money? It's cheap, right? It's very affordable, and a lot of places have it for $799, and <clears throat> it could, on paper, favorably compare to things like the Wahoo Kicker, or at least things like the Kicker Core. So the question that a lot of you have is, is this trainer worth the money, the $799, in comparison to some of the other ones? How does it compare to those big boys, the, the, the Wahoo Kickers and so on? So we're going to dive into that and talk about it a little bit. Uh, the Boogeyman and I have been using Wahoo products for a while. Uh, the Wahoo Kicker, specifically, we had a Gen 2 Kicker that this replaced. Uh, and I know there's been some updates uh, to the Kicker since the Gen 2. So I'm going to be comparing it to that. Bear in mind, if you have a newer version of the Kicker, particularly the Gen 4 and later, uh, some of the things that I'll be addressing really haven't changed. The only thing that really changed big time from Gen 2 to Gen 3 on the Kicker was the um, climb compatibility. Um, we'll also compare it to the Kicker Core. Boogeyman has that uh, at his mom's place and uses that on a regular basis. And um, that's what we'll be focusing on, is, how, is comparing it to that. But of course, also talking about some of its uh, capabilities and how well it does. So, just to get into a little bit of the specification of this trainer, um, it is actually a relatively lightweight trainer in comparison to uh, some of the bigger, heavier um, direct drive trainers. And that comes down to the flywheel. It's not as heavy of a flywheel. Now we'll talk about the flywheel in a little bit. Um, some of you might be turned off by the fact that it's got a lighter weight flywheel, but I'm going to tell you, stick around because we're going to talk about that and I'm going to tell you why it's not a bad thing. Uh, this trainer was designed to be lightweight and portable, uh, so it is lighter. It does have a lighter flywheel. You can see from the profile that it actually folds up very small. Um, if you are in an apartment and you don't want to have to take up a lot of space with a trainer, you can actually slide this under a bed, and the widest part is the skewer itself, which is about 8 inches. Uh, it's still heavy enough. Uh, Specification-wise, though, 15% uh, gradient is what it'll simulate. There are some gradients in Zwift that are more than 15%. Um, what that means is that if you are running 100% trainer accuracy or 100% trainer difficulty, then it'll cap out when you hit about that 15%. Not everybody runs that at 100%, so it really doesn't matter for you that don't. Uh, it's a claimed 2.5% accuracy, uh, which means that in comparison to my Quark power meter, which I will talk a little bit about some of the comparisons between those two data points. It should be within plus or minus 2.5% or a total swing of 5% uh, and a maximum capability of 1900 watts. If you're putting out 1900 watts on a trainer, you're awesome. We love you. You're cool. Uh, you're probably not watching this video because you're like, I don't want that trainer because I'm rocking too many watts. Um, for the rest of us mortals, 1900 watts is plenty. Uh, I don't think either of us put out that since we're both about the size and shape of a spaghetti noodle. So um, pretty good watts overall, but we've never really tested the maximum capability of 1900. Now bear in mind that 1900 watts is also at a specific stated speed. So at lower speeds and at higher speeds, that's going to vary. But if you're pushing a 1500, 1600 watt sprint, this thing will take everything you got. So let's hop on the trainers and we'll talk through some of the good things that we really like about this trainer. And we'll talk about some of the bad things that we don't like about this trainer. Okay, so before we get into the goods and bads about the uh, trainer, let me uh, address one of the big things that's out there on the internet about this trainer, and that is the dreaded clunking noise. Uh, apparently, in some of the original reviews or some of the older versions of this trainer, there was a problem with the flywheel. <clears throat> and in general, what would happen is, uh, sometimes right out of the box, but oftentimes after a few hours of use, as you would ride, you would start hearing this ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Uh, and it, it had something to do with the flywheel coming in contact with something else uh, and getting out of alignment. That being said, uh, I believe, and I think this is what I've read from all the reports, is that 
that's been resolved for several months now. So any of the trainers that are shipping now, any of the trainers that you're going to be buying from retailers have solved that problem. I can tell you we haven't had that problem. We've put uh, several hundred, maybe even over a thousand miles on these trainers so far, and we just haven't had that problem. In fact, what you're hearing right now is our pain cave, which is, if you look around me, it's not very big. These aren't really that loud, but we'll get into that in a little bit. I do want to compare uh, some of the aspects of this trainer to the Wahoos that we've had in the past. Notably, I want to come down to the flywheel, okay? A lot of you are probably not going to buy this trainer because you see that the flywheel is lower weight, right? And somehow that translates into worse road feel. Now, I got to tell you, a trainer doesn't feel like the road to me. It never has felt like the road to me. Probably the best one that I've ever had that truly felt like the road was a CompuTrainer Pro. You can't get those anymore, even if you can. They're probably starting to fall into disrepair and they're a wheel on trainer. They're just not that good, but it felt like the road. I've had other wheel on trainers. They don't feel like the road. This doesn't feel like the road. That being said, something that always aggravated me about the Wahoo, the kicker particularly, is I, I'm a small guy. I'm a lightweight guy. If I'm out riding on the road and I want to go from this cadence, you know, just something light doing nominal power to actually let me let me let me revise that let me go ahead and get actually into a gear here so if i want to go from you know my big ring halfway down the cassette 130 watts and maybe i want to spin up 400 on the road it doesn't take very much you know, I, I put the pedals down and the bike goes that way. On the Wahoo, in comparison to this, it felt like I was stomping through mud for the first 15, 20 seconds. To me, the road feel aspect of a trainer means it's going to mimic what I do on the road. Not that it actually feels like I'm on the road, because it doesn't. It's just not going to. Well... <clears throat> I don't know if it's the lighter flywheel. The engineer in me says probably. Um, but I can get this bike spun up faster and more realistically to a power that I normally do on the road than I could on my Wahoo. In fact, it baffled me so much on the Wahoo why it was that I couldn't get it to spin up. Like by the time I went to do a sprint, and after I got those first kind of uh, 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 muddy pedal strokes out of the way, I, I couldn't peak my power. And now I was already settling into that, that valley. You know, the, you got the peak from the initial burst of the sprint and then you kind of settle in. I never got the peak, I was always at the settle in. Now, maybe some of you guys that are bigger than me, maybe that works. For me, it doesn't work. For me, this actually works. Like when I want to spin up, it spins up and it spins up in a way to me that feels like I'm actually on the road. So that is, that was like the first thing I noticed about this trainer, instant spin up. And it's not an unrealistic one. I don't want you to think that. I think the Wahoo to me is unrealistic. I think it is too slow to spin up. This one mimics what I do on the road. If that's the definition of road feel, I think this one has it. I think this one has it a lot. Okay, so that to me is like the biggest thing about this. Let's talk about some of the other things. Um, let me actually get some of the, the bad stuff out of the way. Okay. Now, I want to point out one really big thing here. The boogeyman and I, I'm gesturing this way. He's over there. I'm going to let him talk too. Uh, the boogeyman and I, nope, yeah, we can see his hand. The boogeyman and I sat down to come up with a list. There's a list right here of things that are good and things that are bad. And we put a couple things on the bad list and we're like, yeah, but it's not that bad. So the things that I'm saying that are bad, I'm, I'm criticizing, okay? I'm being picky here. And I spent my own money for this. Huge disclaimer, nobody, nobody paid for these for me and for the boogeyman. Um, we occasionally do get products for free or stuff, but you know, I try not to review free product or discounted product. I think that's kind of acting like a shill. 
Yeah, I'm talking to you, Phil Guyman. Um, when you provide reviews of stuff that are given to you for free by your sponsors, <sighs> what are you going to do? Say something bad about your sponsors? I don't think so. We weren't sponsored. But here's the bad, okay? Here's the bad stuff. The app. I don't think Wahoo's app is very good, but it's okay. Uh, I've got the Elite app, and it's just not that good, okay? Now, part of it could come down to my phone, too, all right? I've got a, a OnePlus phone. I've had Bluetooth problems with that phone as long as I've had the phone. I mean, it's just driving me nuts. Like, Spotify won't work in my car. It'll work everywhere else, but not in my car. Well, I tried to do a calibration spin down on this, and I, honest to God, got it up to 70 kilometers per hour, and it's like, pedal faster. What the hell do you want from me? I'm doing 700 watts, holding that, trying to get a calibration. It's like, pedal faster. Mm. No. Now, I will say, they have the app as a platform for your phone. Uh, your phone's here. Your computer, both Mac and PC, okay? When I put that app on my computer, and then I used either the built-in Bluetooth or the built-in AMP Plus, I could do my spin down just fine. Out of the box, the accuracy was off. It wasn't off a whole lot, but I was like 10 watts over, maybe 15 watts over on the trainer over my quark. And I do a spin down on my quark every single time I ride outdoors, so it's pretty accurate. And the quarks are known for being pretty accurate. So uh, do that spin down. If it doesn't work on your phone, and it may not, put it on your computer. Put it on the same computer you're using for Zwift, and then it'll probably work. And that's what worked for me. So give that a try. So the app, eh, it's not great, but I don't expect them to be a great app developer. Okay, now this one's controversial. Noise, the noise of this trainer. Now I've been sitting here talking to you this entire time and we have been riding this entire time. So the noise isn't that bad, all right? I had a hard time putting the noise in the bad column because it ain't that bad. Now. We'll pick up the speed a little bit here. And you can hear some noise, okay? I can still talk over it. I'm not talking any louder now. So why am I putting this in the bad column? Let me actually even get a little bit more speed here. We'll do 40K on the flats. Okay, 40 kilometers per hour. That was the noise. To me, it's almost as much of a transmission noise or, you know, the chain, the cassette, all that, as it is a trainer noise. But here's the thing. If you're comparing it to the kicker core, which is a little quieter, the new kickers, the Tax Neo, those are gonna be quieter trainers. I used the Wahoo Gen 2 for a long time right next to the boogeyman in this room. And what you don't see in the corners of the room here are two Klipsch speakers. And right behind you here is a computer. We watch Netflix, YouTube. If it's a simple workout where we don't have to really think that hard, like a glass cranks workout, we're gonna put on the YouTube videos. We're just gonna watch them. We'd have to have that stuff cranked so loud with the Wahoos. It was, the, the Wahoos were mind-numbingly loud. This, we can keep it at a regular volume. It's not that bad. We can totally do it. But they, it is noisier than the twelve, thirteen hundred dollars trainers. And some of the eight, nine hundred dollars trainers. So is it noisy? No. Could you get away with it in an apartment? Probably. Uh, if you were running this in, a, in an apartment and you had neighbors below you, they'd probably think you were running a pretty quiet vacuum cleaner. So you should be okay. One thing I don't like is the handle. It's, um, it's just shaped weird. It has like this hexagon shape to it. It doesn't really fit well in the hands and it makes it kind of a little painful to hold, but it's really not that big of a deal. Especially if you don't plan on uh, holding it that much. Okay, now let's get on to some of the good things about the trainer, because really, I think this is where it's at. Our list of bad things is really, really short. So, good things. Portability. This thing's small and it's a lot lighter than some of the bigger direct drive trainers. That doesn't mean it's bad at all. I mean, it's just not, it's, it's just lighter. Uh, it's got a lighter weight flywheel. It has uh, good construction overall, but it's small. It can fold up and fit under a bed very easily. And uh, I've been doing bike fitting lately. 
Uh, I've been training on that and, and getting a lot smarter on bike fitting. So what I'd like to do is operate a mobile bike fitting studio where I come to you because that's probably a better model than you coming to me. Uh, I can take this trainer with me super easy. It folds up like small. I can just chuck it in the back of my car. I can take it with me on race day. You don't have to plug it in for it to work. Now, I mean, you're not going to get resistance other than it feels like a fluid resistance trainer, right? Um, but if you want to plug it in, go for it. If you got a little power inverter for your car or a little portable power pack, plug it in. And you got yourself a, a flipping trainer that you can control on race day. It'll fit in a trunk very, very easily. Uh, it'll fit, it'll take up less space than a wheel bag. Um, accuracy. Okay. After you calibrate it, and that's important, my accuracy has been dead on. Okay. This, I, I, I have the quark here by comparison. I'm not going to use the DC Rainmaker tool, and here's why. That's his tool. I respect the fact that he's doing that. He put that together. If you want to use that tool for your purposes, that's great, but I'm not going to sit here and monetize a channel and use his tool. I, don't, I think that's kind of crappy. What I will tell you is I've done some analysis using Golden Cheetah, Strava, side by side, and these curves on these trainers between the, the Elite and my Quark, dead on. Okay, If it's a plus or minus 2.5, I think they're being kind of generous with that. It's probably plus or minus 1. Uh, it is accurate after the calibration spin down. I've only had to do that calibration spin down once, but I had to do it. Other than that, it's watt for watt, excellent. If it varies, the only time that it varies is when you're doing maybe a sprint. This spins up pretty quick. Like I said, it's kind of supposed to. That initial kick can be about 10 to 15 watts higher than my quark. I, that benefits me. I'm not overly concerned about it, but at the same time, in a, in a sprint, which by the way, I suck at sprinting. In a sprint, if I get an extra 10 to 15 watts, you know, am I really getting a benefit? Not really. If it was an extra 50, 60 watts, sure, right? Big deal. Okay, ease of assembly. If you haven't already watched my unboxing video, go watch that. I'll put a link at the end here. Uh, it's super easy to assemble. Now, I put noise in the good column too, because it's not that loud. I mean, sure, like I said, louder than some of the other ones. But compared to my Wahoo Gen 2, this thing's like whisper quiet. That I mean, it's a little more speed here. Uh, cassette inclusion. Most trainers don't come with a cassette until you get to the big boys, and even some of those don't come with them. The fact that this came with an Altegra cassette, I mean, okay. And, you know, a month free of Zwift. These are, these are big bonuses. That's a $50 to $60 cassette I don't have to buy, or even more sometimes. Yes, if you have to shift it out to a 9 or a 10 speed or a 12 speed, you're going to have to know how to take off the cassette. Somebody made, made some comments about that. Like, you didn't teach us how to take off the cassettes. Sorry, that's a different video. You will learn how to take off the cassette. There's tons of them on YouTube. Figure that out. So, there we go. Uh, there's my takes on the good. What do you say, Boogeyman? So, the build quality is really good. The handle is made out of plastic, but that's not a big deal. It's a good plastic. The main body is made out of um, a really high quality metal and it feels really nice. Overall, the whole unit just feels really solid and intact. So a couple more good things. Um, now this is really, really subjective, okay? When I'm doing ERG workouts, which by the way, I hate ERG, and the only reason I did an ERG workout was for you all uh, and for science, right? Um, the, the thing that drives me nuts a lot of times is some of the trainers are very hard to predict when the hard power for ERG kicks in or the easy power drops out, right? It's kind of hard to, to see that or feel it. This one's pretty quick and it's pretty predictable. That being said, I don't really, I don't really like ERG, so I'm not gonna dwell too much on that. Uh, the trainer difficulty settings. Huge discussions all over the internet. If you wanna get into a debate about that, find a forum, there's thousands of them you can discuss about it. Here's the thing, when, with my kicker, Gen 2, uh, I, I've got a hill here that is almost identical in every way to the Watopia climb, the little uh, one and a half minute, two minute climb on Watopia. It's almost exactly the same. Like, kicks up to seven, eight percent, little bumps to 10, flattens out, kicks back up again. I have like no problem doing that climb 
in my big ring, maybe in my uh, 21 tooth cog, right? For the majority of that climb, maybe 18 tooth. So kind of halfway down to two thirds down the cassette. If I set my Wahoo to 100%, the best I could do was my little ring, big cog in the back, grinding 50 RPM. I don't know if it was a problem with mine, but Boogeyman's had the same issue. So I had to run it around 50 to 60% for it to even be close to realistic. And I've found that to be the truth on a lot of other trainers, because I compare, again, to that one climb, like what can I do here, what speed am I maintaining, what power am I maintaining? What cadence am I maintaining? This one, I can run this around 75 to 80% trainer difficulty and get the exact same feel as that climb that I'm talking about. So, to me, that's a big plus. Now, something that took me a little bit to get used to, and honestly, at first, I was like, oh, I don't like this at all, was how fast this thing reacts to changes in gradient on Zwift. Now, if you're using other platforms, I'm assuming it's gonna do the same. I haven't tested this on Ruby or anything like that. Uh, I'm all in on Zwift. Many of you are too. But this thing reacts fast to gradient changes. So if you hit the base of a hill, you feel the base of that hill. Now, it's not unnatural. It's not like if you go from a zero to a 7%, all of a sudden there's a wall. It, just like in real life, it takes a moment to get there and you can carry your momentum in but I will say, like on my Wahoo, you go from a zero to a seven, it takes like a good seven to 10 seconds for that thing. And even on the Boogeyman's kicker core, which is just a year old, it takes like five to 10 seconds for that to kind of ramp in. And then what happens is like, think about the, the rollers on the backside of the Watopia Hilly course as you're coming into the finish. Like some of those I didn't even feel. You would, you would roll up and down, but the resistance kind of felt the same throughout. It would, you could feel it a little bit. No, with this, those rollers hit, you feel the rollers instantly. So first time I used this trainer, I literally threw it on, threw the bike on it and raced on it. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> I really got the crap kicked out of me on that race because I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna be able to you know, go up this crit hill here in crit city and you know, I can just grind this one gear the whole way. Nope, <laughs> no, I wound up dying. So uh, at first I was like, oh, I don't like this. And, and then I realized, oh, well, you know, the hill goes like this. It should feel like it's doing that. So it does, you know, huge, huge benefit to me. I like that feeling. I like knowing you have to predict the base of the hill to correct your gearing. On the Wahoo, you did not have to do that. So big, big plus there. Okay, one other thing I forgot, and I'm just cutting this in. You can see I've done weird stuff in my hair because I'm gonna be riding for real now and I don't want it all in my face. So pardon the man bun. Uh, but one thing I wanted to talk about, connectivity, connectivity, connectivity. Of course this does AMP+, Plus, Bluetooth, controllable, all that kind of fun stuff. So it's got the FEC, the blue B BTLE, whatever. If you need to connect it to your computer, it has a way to do it. Um, I will say, I had some minor hiccups where it's like it won't find the FEC and I have to unplug it and plug it back in. It'll find the other stuff like the, the it'll say like uh, uh, the cadence sensor is recognized, the power is recognized, but not the controllable. Unplug it, plug it back in, it works just fine. I keep these plugged in all the time and just maybe once every other week or so I got to unplug it, plug it back in. Don't know why that is. Might just be that we have so many sensors all in the same room you may never experience that problem. But if you do, just unplug, plug it back in, and in three seconds, Bob's your uncle. Now, here's the big one for me. Both the Boogeyman and I, I think I've said this like 70 times in this video, we had a Wahoo Kicker, uh, the version two. Neither of us would ever, 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 ever trust that trainer in a race, right? We would never connect the trainer as our power source during a race. Because no matter what I did, and trust me, listen, I'm a computer guy. This is what I do. I understand frequency spectrum. I know how to block things out. I know how to move things off of channels. I know how to get stuff so that I can free up radio frequency space. I don't care what we were doing with that Wahoo kicker. Both of our kickers would drop out our signal at least 40 to 50 times every single ride. And if we were doing a race, you're done. You go off the line, drop out, you're done. The race is gone. 
If you decide to chase it back down, good luck, because the next time you have a dropout, you gotta do another chase. It was so flipping annoying. Since we've had these trainers, we've had one dropout. And Boogeyman may have slammed things and thrown things and cussed a lot, but it wasn't in the middle of a race. No, it wasn't in the middle of a race, but he got back on. Don't worry, he didn't do all of those things. That would be me. Um, I, I don't know what that was. It was an anomaly because over the hundreds of miles, even thousands of miles we've put on each of these trainers, that's the one and only dropout we've ever had. I have not been using my Quark for the power for this, this entire time, just because I wanted to see how the trainers were doing with connectivity, and they're doing brilliantly. And that's using both Ant Plus or Bluetooth. Doesn't matter which one it uses, it works just fine both ways. Some people have better luck on either radio protocol. I typically default to Ant Plus because I got the dongle and it's right down there, but no problem. With my previous, I, I couldn't use it. My, my Quark worked just fine. It, it would connect, I would never have dropouts, I would never have issues. The previous trainer would not. Uh, this one, I've had zero issues. So if you're worried about that, you do a lot of Zwift racing and you don't want dropouts, uh, it's just good, it just works. Okay, so that's our take on the Elite Suido trainer. Um, am I glad I spent 799 bucks times two for these trainers? Yes, I am. Um, our Gen 2 Wahoos were, they were perfectly fine. They still worked great. They were built like tanks, but they were loud. They were annoying. Um, it is kind of obnoxious. So I'm really thrilled that we got these. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. And um, I can't recommend these highly enough. I think they're great units. I've loved Elite for a while. They've got great customer service. So yeah, if you're looking for a trainer, you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, but you want a direct drive trainer that's high quality, accurate, all that kind of fun stuff, this might be a great choice for you. So uh, that's it for now. Um, feel free to come back and check out some other videos. I've got some more reviews coming of some pretty cool products, and we'll have some race breakdowns and things like that. Uh, let us know in the comments if there's something you want us to, a race breakdown you want us to do, a Zwift workout we want to build for you, something like that. Let us know. Um, we'll do what we can. Until, uh, until next time, thanks for stopping by. If you like this video, you know, hit the like button. If you didn't like this video, let's we'll close the freaking window and go away. Uh, other than that, share it with your friends. We like that. Subscribe. We've got a lot of subscribers now. That's cool. Let's get more. Um, and that's it. So I guess we'll see you again soon. Thanks for stopping by.